Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at two somewhat similar, very different devices. The super affordable R36S and the more mid-range RG40XXV. Now these devices are both vertical and have very similar performance, but they have very different price points and quite a few differences when it comes to features. The R36S can typically be found for around $35 to $40, with sales sometimes dropping it as low as $26 to $28. In contrast, the 40XXV is priced at the $60 to $75 price range. So you may be asking, why not just go straight for the cheaper option here if performance is roughly the same? Well, while the R36S offers a lot of value for the price point where it is at, it may not necessarily have all the features or quality you are looking for. I think there are very specific circumstances in which each of these would be the better choice. What are those? Watch on to find out. Before I carry on though, please remember that my videos are overviews based on research from various online sources and reviews, not hands-on testing. As such, your individual experience may vary a little. I do still believe that there is a lot of value here, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you learned something today. So without further ado, let's take a look at the specs. The obvious difference right off the bat is that the 40XXV has a larger 4-inch display. The resolution of the screens on these two are the same though, and many a reviewer has commented on how good the quality of the screen on the 36S is. The R36S has a CPU that is a little older though, and although it runs at the same speed, you may find a game or two that will perform a little better on the 40XXV. The slightly newer RAM on the V will also contribute to this. Another main point to note here is that the 36S does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity, whereas the 40XXV has this built in. You can tether your phone to the 36S to get connectivity, or do it by connecting a USB-C to a adapter and a Wi-Fi dongle onto that. I'll leave some links in the description if you want to go this route. I will also leave a link to a video guide on how to do this. Lastly, I have to note that the 40XXV has the option for display output via the mini HDMI port which is built in, which is something that the R36S does not have. So if you're looking to connect your device to a bigger screen and connect a Bluetooth controller, so you can play your retro games like the olden days on a TV, then the 40XXV is a clear winner in this comparison. But let's move on to design and ergonomics then. Here, the R36S has a transparent plastic casing available in various colors. The device includes dual analog sticks, where the 40XXV only has one. Reviewers do note though that the D-pad and buttons can be stiff and may require breaking in or modification for optimal performance. The trigger buttons at the back are also less ergonomic than the 40XXV in my opinion. The V on the other hand adopts a more modern design with a larger 4-inch screen and minimal bezels. It's available in white, indigo blue and transparent black. The build quality is praised as premium feeling, but the V features a single analog stick as discussed. Unfortunately, some reviewers found the analog stick to be a little inaccurate, with it basically snapping to cardinal directions. This is not a problem in older retro games, which do not basically use it, but a game like Mario 64 would be difficult to play. However, the D-pad is highly regarded, with reviewers noting its excellent range of motion and precision. Next, let's talk about performance. Here, both consoles perform excellently for systems up to and including PlayStation 1. They can handle some Nintendo 64, Dreamcast and PSP games, but performance is hit or miss with about half the games running well. This may just be me, but it seems like the 40XXV benefits from its newer chipset, as it seems to handle more demanding games a little better. Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast emulation seems to be a little smoother on the 40XXV in some games, though still not perfect for all games unfortunately. So with that said, let's take a quick look at a list of pros and cons for each to recap. The R36S is extremely affordable, with good performance for older systems. It has a nice, compact and pocketable design. Unfortunately, it has stiff controls right out of the box. It has no built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and it does not have display output. The 40XXV on the other hand has a larger screen with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and that mini HDMI port which allows you to connect it to a TV. On the downside, it is notably more expensive, with only one analog stick that tends to snap to cardinal directions. So, which one should you choose? Well, that would depend on a number of factors, like what type of games you want to play, and how important features like built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is to you. The R36S provides incredible value for its price, especially if you can get it on sale. Many reviewers agree that there is nothing in the $30-$40 price range that offers better value. 
This makes it an excellent choice for beginners or those on a tight budget. If you're new to retro handholds, it will also allow you to get a feel for what you like and dislike about these units without breaking the bank. The 40XXV, on the other hand, while more expensive, offers a premium experience with its larger screen, improved build quality, and slightly better performance for more demanding games. The fact that Bluetooth and Wi Fi is built in also makes it very convenient to use and update. And you have the option to connect it to a larger screen. So I would say the price is justified. If you're looking for a device that feels and looks good with more features, this would be your choice. If you want some more detail on the R36S or the 40XXV, you can click on the links on screen now for my video overviews on them. That's it for this one though. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tech update.